Today, I will tell you more about Kanban swim lanes. And I continue to see the problem where people are not aware of different ways how you can benefit from swim lanes in each Kanban board. And I'm still surprised it's a rare occasion where software supports swim lanes. Both things are super he helpful. I'm already showing you an example of a Kanban board which does have swim lanes. A swim lane is a horizontal splitter which helps to group different items into specific groups by work type, by service level, or other cases, which I will soon explain to you. So in, in this example, as you see, I have at least few rows, aka swim lanes, which um, are based on the service level. The first and most important one is the expedite. It means we want to focus here on the work that needs to be solved here now, other otherwise we're bearing a huge risk. Then, lower, we have client projects, which have fixed date. It means the closer the deadline, the higher the risk of not doing something, and we really want to keep up the word to our customers. Lastly, on the lowest priority, as you see from top to the bottom, I have research and development as well as admin tasks. We focus on these items once we have enough time apart from our top priorities. So this is one way of how you can group uh, work items into swim lanes and a swim lane spans across the board separating um, different, uh, different properties. Now other thing, if I'm using tags as customers, I can group and use swim lane for, the, for a tag. As you see here, customer A incorporated has a dedicated swim lane, so all items tagged appear here on this particular row. I can also switch to grouping by user, so I can investigate what's up with each of my teammates um, across the board, and it gives me various flexibility points. So it's a good grouping mechanism, and I can leverage it later on for filtering and structuring my board. It can also serve as a great documentation tool, so people understand where to put things when they know what they are putting. If it's an issue, they should put it in the issue swim lane. If it's a new development, it will have probably a dedicated swim lane for that as well. If we're working on Scrum, we can do sprints as swim lanes. That also makes our Kanban boards neat and convenient. And these swim lanes, they travel as structure items in Teamhood everywhere else. So I'm showing you an example where I can show swim lanes on a calendar or timeline so I have a better understanding where the work is coming from. I will see that in other boards, as in examples most likely, like goals, where a swim lane is a structure symbolizing objective, what do we want to achieve, and then items living under that swim lane are key results that will help bring the achievement step by step. And as you see, you can also measure progress on each swim lane. So this is super convenient when you're tracking something. Now the last really unique and important thing in Teamhood, you will not find it anywhere else, is the special type of swim lanes. We call them sub-swim lanes. What if you're working not only on high-level process, but you want to model same downstream process in a single board? And each top-level item is actually a swim lane on its own. So you expand it and child items or subtasks, they can travel separately as cards across the board just because your top level item is a swim lane of its own. This is extremely powerful and it gives you freedom of structure and flexibility when trying to manage bigger teams or more complex projects. I hope this gives you a better understanding and ideas how can you use swim lanes on your daily basis to make your projects happen faster to better collaboration of your teamwork and just simply to structure everything so people spend less time thinking what is here that's it